Alopecia is a rare condition among women in Nigeria. And because of this, many people are not well informed of this condition. We spoke to Moshuda at Badmos, who shared her journey with us. I was preparing for service and, and, and I went to the salon to wash my hair. I was on drinks then. And when I got to the salon, the hairdresser, she hadn't even like, started washing my hair. She just, was just like separating the dreads and she saw the, the bald spot. So just small, like a coin, coin shape around here. So when she said she was like, um, Auntie Shefari in Yoruba means, Auntie, did you like scrape your hair? I was like, why would I scrape my hair? She's like, oh, there's a spot here, like a bald, shiny spot. And she showed me. And I was like, ah, no, what's this? What's so that day I was scared. I just took the pack of my hair. I told her not to even wash it again. I went home. And I told my mom, like, I was so thing happened at the salon. And my mom was like, Damn, this is spiritual. Talo family, talo wale, you know, like, you no, know, and Nigerian mothers. So we started thinking, did anybody come? Because that was the first thing that came to my mind. Like, hair can't just disappear. It's, it's something that is always like a part of you. It can't just disappear. So what happened? Then I went to camp. I went to camp the following week. And when I came back, the spots were still there. So that was when it started for me. And I started doing so many things. We took the spiritual, spiritual route. Then it was like a month or two after. I just went online. I went online and just like um, I, I searched in my symptoms and the signs I saw, the bout spots and all that. And I saw alopecia. So I told my mom, like, ah, I saw something like alopecia. I'm like, oh, no, she doesn't feel that as it. So I told her I wanted um, a second opinion because we've been doing the whole spiritual thing. So, like, I wanted a medical opinion. So we went to see the doctor and he told me it was fungal infection. So I was placed on drugs and it didn't do anything. But my mind kept going back to the alopecia. Where I was seven to, there, there was um, a health center in the compound. I went to see the director then too, and he told me the same thing like the fungal infection. So I still wasn't convinced. I told my dad I want second, a third opinion. So he took me to his workplace and I saw the doctor um, they used there. And she was the first person that said, Okay, this looks like alopecia. She doesn't even really know much about it. But she was like, she's going to refer me to Lutz Dermatology Clinic. It's at Yaba. So that was an amazing thing. So when I got there, that was in, I think around probably September or so. And um, I saw the nurse in charge. They were like, ah, there is no appointment. There's no space available to see the doctor. The next appointment is going to be in 2016, March. So I told him, like, March K, like, no, I have to see the doctor because by then I already had, like, a lot of bout spots. It wasn't just one again. I had about five then. So I showed her my head. Like, she should just see it. Like, she wasn't even so, I, I felt it was something she, she probably had seen. She wasn't even so concerned. It's like, see, is there people with worse conditions than you have that are on the list? I can't do anything. So I begged her, I was in tears, and she was like, okay, she's going to give me December. Space in December, she come back in December. She told me to come very heavy that um, the clinic time starts by eight. So I got there at seven. I was in when I got there at seven, I met a lot of people already. And when they started giving out numbers, I think the number ended at um, 25 or so. I think I was like number 29. So they told me, like, I will meet the doctor that she come back the next day. So I started crying. Nobody understood why I was crying, and the woman was like, no, like what happened? What? So I told her, like, Ma, no, I can't come back in January. Uh, like, I can't come back next year. I have to see the doctor today. So I just opened my scalp, and like, I had, like, my hair was like, you know, when then they say rats, rats chopped in someone's hair. So I had a lot of patches, and it was really ugly. And everybody was like, oh. So the nurse came and said, So. Look at people here, people with terrible conditions. What's con There's nothing wrong with you. Just go back and you see the doctor when you see the doctor. She wasn't even so concerned and I just kept on crying. So people begged her and she gave me a number. So when I saw the dermatologist, she was like, you have alopecia, you're not special. You're just one of the few unfortunate ones. So 
there is no known cause, there is no cure for it. But since you have alopecia areata right now, we're going to place you on the treatment. You're going to take a steroid shot for six months. So the steroid shots they give you on the bald um, spot. So I was happy, like, okay, finally, this is something I can do. So I went home. Well, I went to my mom's sister's place then. So when I got to her place, she was like, oh, check her out. We, like like, we should go see all these um, herbalists, people that are into herbal treatments and yeah. So we went there. The lady said, okay, she's going to prepare a bowl for me and all that. But first, I have to scrape my hair. So that day, I'd already taken the first steroid shot on my scalp. So I told the woman then that no, I don't want to do the treatment. I would like to complete the um the steroid shots first. Then I'll come back after six months if it doesn't work. So my my mom sister told my mom, the mom started shouting. I know why can't I do both together? It's just we're looking we're both looking for solution and all that. So she convinced me to like script up my hair. So I scraped it up and I signed the about treatment too. But after scraping off my hair. And I went for the next um, shot. It, it got worse. My, my hair started going back, but the spot things it didn't come back. So after the second shot, by the time I would go back for the third shot, my hair was completely gone. I had no hair. So when the guy wanted to give me the shot, the dermatologist that saw me that day, you know, it's like a public um, health center, so you won't see the same doctor every time. So he didn't understand because normally you're supposed to give shots on the on the spot. So he called the head dermatologist and she was like, what happened? So I explained to her that I scraped it. Like, you shouldn't have scraped it out. The treatment is for partial hair loss. There is no treatment for total hair loss, so there's nothing you can do. So I was like, what? The way she to me a whole lot of things and I had to leave. And they didn't give me another appointment. They just told me to be that they were going to call me. And till today, they never did. So that was it for me. And here we are. Moshudat Badmos and Jasmine Ogunz share the most awkward experiences they've had living with alopecia. For me, one of the ridiculous things I've heard about alopecia is when people ask that, uh, do you have cancer? Because I feel it should be known that chemotherapy actually causes illness. Yeah. And a lot of people, even, okay, I did a surgery in 2017 and I was in the hospital and people came, nurses, and assumed that I was a cancer patient just because. Wow. Because to me, it's very ridiculous because uh, you guys are in the line. They should, they should know better, should exactly. Know better, because yeah. actually, um, cancer does not lead to hair loss. Hair loss. What leads to hair loss treatment. is the chemo yeah. treatment. And for survivors, they grow their hair back. Because what chemo does like is it kills the cells. And you know, in the process of killing the cells, it kills the um, hair follicle as well. So at that point, the victim lose his or her hair. But after the chemo phase, once they, 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 they survive that um, cancer phase, their hair grow back. So it's a different thing entirely. Alopecia and cancer are not the same. They are two different. That's why sometimes when we do our campaign, we emphasize on the fact that it is not, not cancer, cancer, it is alopecia, no alopecia. So there are two different things. Yeah, one ridiculous thing I've heard was when one spiritualist said, someone took my hair to the ocean. <laughs> now my hair is under the water, you know. And I, 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 I tried to sound sarcastic too because it didn't make any sense to me. I was like, okay, please tell me the person that took my hair to the ocean so that I can beg the person to give me my hair back. Because as it is, it's not useful for the person. And the person is not letting me use my hair. So let's beg the person to let me have my hair back. <laughs> it's actually funny. Another really cool thing is when you tell people, like you've explained to the person, oh God. Alopecia is God, it's like, oh, that's bad. So why did you cut your hair? I know, be like, <laughs> we hear that a lot. <laughs> like it is constant. Like you do awareness this year now. We do. I'm um, September is official awareness month. Yeah. We do awareness. You guys, we're telling so much about it. And next year, you're like ah, you've tied this snake. Why did you cut your hair this year? <laughs> God. Another ridiculous thing. In fact, this one has been coming non-stop. 
you know, um, during the um, interview I had with BBC Pigeon last year, I mentioned how my relationship failed, how the um, wedding introduction got ca ca called off three days to the wedding introduction by my supposed mother-in-law. And you won't believe the kind of messages that I've been receiving. Random men coming around, asking for my hand in marriage, out just like that, from nowhere. You don't know me, you don't know anything about me. And I'll be like, where is this coming from? I said, I saw your interview about um, your mother-in-law that called <laughs> off your wedding. I'm like, for crying out loud. The interview was not even about, about marriage. That. It was about alopecia. <laughs> so you're not bothered about the awareness I'm creating, you're bothered about marriage. But I didn't come on air to say I'm looking for a husband. I didn't, I didn't say I am not dating or I'm not in a relationship. So it sounds ridiculous. Like it keeps coming and every time I hear that, I just shake my head like, oh my God, not again. Long or short hair, all women are beautiful. We need to create more awareness surrounding alopecia and eliminate every form of stigmatization towards those living with alopecia.